Uh, thank you, Dr. Little. Um, members of the board this evening, uh, bringing to you uh, the third reading of the Lakeside Middle School attendance lines. I was actually out on the campus of that facility today. I'm excited for you to see the pictures that Mr. Warren uh, is going to show later on. It it's, um, seems like it's just about ready to, to move into. It's, it's really coming along nicely. So this is an appropriate time to, to finalize these attendance lines for our upcoming students. Um, just a reminder, we've you know seen this presentation uh, a number of times, so I, but I'll just uh, run through these briefly. We use a number of rationale when we're trying to uh, develop attendance lines. Obviously, we want to use our facilities um, efficiently as possible. Um, we want to try to minimize a division of subdivisions so we can be efficient in our bus routing and things like that. Um, try to allow for uh, future student growth in permanent facilities. Uh, so you're not maxing out a building when you open it up, if at all possible. Uh, sometimes in our community, that's a, a, a real challenge, given the growth that we've, we see. Uh, we do look at transportation patterns, um, route students and, and uh, families, and, and our buses would, would move to and from schools. Uh, we try to use natural uh, boundaries, uh, creeks, rivers, roads, things like that, where possible, uh, that makes sense for reference points for, for folks. And obviously, in this case, we're looking to balance the um, student enrollment uh, between Lakeside or the former Lexington Middle School and Meadowland Middle School. <clears throat> so currently, these are the uh, school boundaries that we've seen um, and, and have in existence now. Um, you know, we have uh, 616 approximately uh, students at, at Lexington Middle School, 1,027 here at um, Meadow Glen. Um, and I, and I just point out that we're really, in this uh, zoning effort, we're really only talking about these two middle school uh, boundaries. We're not changing any of the um, high school uh, attendance lines or affecting any of the other middle schools that are uh, bordering up to um, these two zones. Proposed lines uh, here for third reading. <clears throat> Again, we're um, looking at um, approximately 852 students at, at Lakeside and 826 at uh, Meta Glen. Um, and we've uh, done a number of uh, community meetings and uh, two previous readings of the, to the board. Um, you've seen uh, some community input, obviously, at those meetings. You've also uh, received some input that we shared with you for through feedback forums and online uh, information that our communications team has done a great job um, supporting. And so uh, th this evening, we're uh, recommending the, the same um, lines that, that we have. So, um, you know, we, we really the, the biggest portion that, that you want to focus on is kind of right here where we, we turn down Hope Ferry Road. We, we kind of follow uh, the creek back through here. And then we, we grab these neighborhoods. Uh, and this is an example of where we try not to split neighborhoods. Um, you may say, why didn't you just come down the road there? Well, a couple of these neighborhoods are actually um, – a share homeowners association and common pool and things like that so uh, we, we come behind that neighborhood and, and come across and come down uh, mill stream and then turn up lee cleckley and then over towards uh, corley mill road um, to to finalize the edge of our district boundary <clears throat> um, elementary feeder patterns just to kind of recap lakeside would have portions of uh, lexon elementary new providence and midway uh, meta glen middle would have all of Medeglin Elementary and portions of Midway and, and Oak Grove uh, feeding, feeding it. As I mentioned, the high school feeder pattern, um, Lakeside would be all River Bluff and uh, Medeglin would also be all River Bluff. Uh, we, we were able to do this a few years ago. I see Mr. Calhoun in the, in the room here and I think he can probably speak to the, uh, the change that you see uh, on a campus when you have to split that middle school uh, feeder. Uh, now with everybody going to River Bluff, um, there, there's a lot of continuity and connectivity to the high school campus. Students really get involved and engaged in activities at the high school level, uh, and so it really allows them uh, to do that uh, under one common umbrella. So um, that, that's going to uh, remain in this, in this zoning. Uh, we are looking at uh, grandfathering options. Uh, the new attendance lines, you, you know, if in a current seventh grade student, uh, which would be rising eighth grade student, um, wishes to stay at Meta Glen Middle School, um, then they, they can do so. Uh, they will have to provide their own transportation. We don't have uh, the opportunity to run special bus routes to be able to pick those students up. 
Um, it's really only applicable to Medeglin in this particular situation because all of the students from the current Lexington Middle School building will be moving to Lakeside since it's a new uh, replacement facility. And then uh, speaking about immersion, uh, this is one of the things that we, we still had some uh, discussions about. I appreciate our immersion team, uh, instructional services folks work, working really diving into this and, and um, working with the schools and, and problem solving and, and making um, some good opportunities for our students. Um, the recommendations Chinese immersion will remain at Meadow Glen Middle School. Obviously, that's fed from the um, program at the elementary, uh, Meadow Glen Elementary School level. The French immersion uh, program would be located at, at Lakeside Middle School, um, and that's obviously uh, primarily fed through uh, Midway Elementary School. Um, the recommendation is that the eighth grade uh, French immersion program be located at Metal, uh, Medeglin Middle School next year uh, for that final year. Uh, the, the, t the team reached out to those parents and, and worked with those uh, individuals and students, and um, overwhelming majority of those uh, individuals wanted to finish that uh, immersion experience at Medeglin. So we'll do that for those eighth grade students, and then the following year it would move um, over to Lakeside for a complete uh, matriculation at Lakeside. Uh, just re rehashing some key dates here. Just you know, we had first reading in December. Uh, we had uh, two public public meetings. One at uh, each of the, the schools. Those were those were well attended. Um, I mean, we had second reading, um, and then here we're here tonight for third reading and um, proposing action uh, later on in the agenda this evening. Um, obviously, for parents involved, we we have this uh, school locator link where you can go out on our website. Uh, click on the link and put in your uh, address, and it will tell you which uh, school that you um, are zoned for in the, in the new new line. So it's a pretty easy, quick tool to be able to do that if you had questions. Uh, with that, I'll be happy to uh, answer any of the board's questions uh, this evening. And, and again, um, we will be um, having consideration for action later on in the agenda. Thank you. I just want to thank Jeff, you and your team. I think, um, you know, not many districts are used to having to do this over and over, but we are, and uh, we've learned every time we've done it. And um, again, I love the amount of input and how we, we settle on the best decision for our community. So thank you.